creating Java client-side applications here? Okay, good. Have uh, anyone tried to use hardware acceleration in your time? Okay. Uh, I'll find the talk for today. It's a long story. Uh, describing the project life cycle, uh, devices and bundles, and how we operate like in free as in beer and free as in speech. So, uh, my background, uh, I work for a Swedish company, and uh, we love using Java, because Java uh, enables us to generalize uh, and test our application in different form factors, um, like uh, small embedded devices to uh, desktop to like uh, laptop computers. So, in my day job, I try to deploy Java on different uh, devices, that you necessarily are not using the same kind of CPU, you can use it to do second step. So, in the general, well, I've been involved with Open UK, and we, we got uh, basic ports working on all kinds of platforms, and we basically, when we port Java, we make quite a lot of use of uh, this central processing unit. Uh, this picture shows a typical system on a ship. It's uh, what, what you can find in a mobile phone today. And the, the circle is what you actually use when you are deploying your application in Java. Because the CPU uh, does all, usually all the rendering. Uh, but the, the good news is that uh, um, by it, it, Java generalizes the platform, so your application will run on all kinds of CPUs. Yeah, uh, but uh, then later I... But all kinds of CPUs. Yes, this, so... This is the agnostic part, like like Java allows you to, to remove the platform differences uh, in the aspect of CPU itself. So that's that's the old story we are tired to say, you know, right ones run everywhere. So at least this is true for the bytecode. Uh, it runs on all these CPUs. So that part here of the picture, like you have in your desktop, your CPU, uh, and on mobile devices, like the CPU part or the controller part, uh, is uh, abstracted away. So you don't need to care about that anymore. Uh, but, but then uh, when the users started to use OpenUDK, uh, using the ports, uh, they started to complain and say it was not fluid enough, they had some quality goals, they were not just accepting that it was running. They, and uh, if you look at the picture, there's a lot portion of the system on a ship that we were not using. We were not using the 3D graphics accelerator, we were not using the video accelerator, the audio processing unit. And uh, then we come, we must embrace a new kind of love, not just a new kind of love. <laughs> this is more dedicated love. So I will let the uh, sun. Yeah. Right. And so that's how we met. So that's how we created our our love. Congratulations! <laughs> 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 and so one and a half year ago, except this, you know, jumped ship, and he said, "Oh, like he, he was using our stuff for testing graphics output on tiny little devices because you know CPU rendered stuff doesn't work really." And so I'm coming from partially from the same field, from the embedded field as a contractor. I worked uh, like, like you know, getting uh, a navigation, edutain entertainment, edutainment system for cars, etc. Um, running with video decoders, etc. So and, and this is, you know, we always never had a, a, a powerful CPU or anything. So you always offload everything to dedicated devices, uh, parts, cores, etc. And that's the same with desktop, you have a powerful graphic card, but still, you know, like uh, a few years ago, maybe around 
2006, um, uh, there was an XGL driver for, for XOR, like uh, you know, the accelerated uh, portion of X, everything was rendered in OpenGL. So this was like the first uh, offloading of graphics of the desktop, uh, so you have a composite, uh, a composite manager, etc. Et so you know that also on the desktop that this is a trend, and now let's say the windowing manager, they do everything themselves uh, using hardware acceleration, because you cannot rely on uh, powerful CPUs. So um, and, and so this was always true on the uh, uh, for the uh, embedded field. And uh, so here on the embedded field, we have all these uh, IP vendors who provide all the stuff: uh, Power VR, Mali, Adreno, etc. And now you already see. So besides all these, you may know uh, in regards to OpenGL and CL. So here are also in the embedded field like special digital signal processors to have audio, video, encoding, decoding. <coughs> and yeah, and we start to see a trend also that inside a multi-core CPU, there are two CPUs of different kinds. So that's a heterogeneous CPU. So you can have a, like a, one little small CPU that's very power efficient, that can run all the background tasks, and then you have a one powerful <laughs> CPU that does uh, like uh, media applications. And if you extend it a bit further, then you will have uh, specialized CPUs uh, for different kinds of tasks inside the same system. Yeah. So, so what do you want then? Right? I mean, uh, do you want to rob the general purpose CPU and trust one vendor? Let's say Intel says, ah, oh, we don't need the dedicated stuff anymore. You know, we give you the new CPU with eight and more cores, and they can do everything. Um, or do you? So the, you know, the pro argument is you have the same code, you, know, you have your own Intel code running. It's easy to use, you think, um, because you have something like runs everywhere, right? If you stay under the Windows domain and you know you have these blinders on, and uh, okay, but it's not fast. So Intel is still there. I mean, they still have to prove, for example, one vendor that you can uh, have uh, a fast solution for everything. Uh, with the general purpose uh, path. And then you have the dedicated silicon, so it's fast. But the problem is it's customized code. You have binary blobs, pattern issues, and all that stuff. Incompati incompatible instruction sets like shaders you have in 3D or OpenCL, whatever. You, it's all different. So what can we do about that? Um, so here, for, the, for the, the remedy here is we have open interfaces, application, programming interfaces, and binary interfaces. Um, most are uh, very important, of course. So uh, like you have OpenGL, OpenCL, like for 3D graphics, for processing, um, and audio, and audio and video. So we have, uh, thanks to, to Ponos, put everything together, we have uh, a solution for that, and also a binary interface. So you can write platform compatible source code and link it to some uh, black box which does the work for you. So that's a good thing, and the remedy for the general purpose CPU is <coughs> to use the dedicated silicon. And this is what, what you see on all these devices and in the demos later. Uh, my name is Wes, Julian Wes. My mission in 2006 was to start creating my own first-person shooter. Uh, and uh, I, uh, it was based on a software renderer which was extremely slow. And um, I, I, I gave a try to uh, Jack 2, uh, which uh, had uh, two back ends. And, one based on Jogger and one based on its main competitor. Uh, the problem with the competitor is that uh, uh, it was out of luck. I tested on two machines and uh, I got once a, a blue screen of death, or I said, oh, you go to the trash bin. Okay. Um, so yes, I picked something that works. That's the main point. Um, I, I decided to uh, to go on using Joggle uh, because uh, I was satisfied by uh, the, the communication with the community, the other developers, uh, uh, and uh, I, I was I was satisfied by the, its uh, reliability 
and uh, it, it's not a black box. You you see what happens. Uh, there's a there's a lot of transparency. We have a, a, a bug tracker, so you you know uh, what what's going on, what works, what doesn't what doesn't work, and uh, it's very important not only for a, a hobby project but mainly for uh, professional applications. Uh, so you can convince uh, uh, corporations to, to use uh, your product. You can say, hey, oh, just look at that. You, we know what, to, what, we, what we do. Um, and uh, of course, uh, I appreciated different forms of, of support, especially community support. We have components, but they are more uh, bare metal components. So that's OpenGL, that's OpenCL. Uh, AL, etc. But you don't write your complex game with that or CAD application. So that's, of course, you usually have engines as well, um, mm -hmm. which abstract everything. You know, you read in Maya or whatever and, and do your stuff. Uh, so we follow the modular concept that, that we just concentrate of, or, you know, to our OpenGL, AL APIs. Uh, we limit ourselves to the, to the binding itself, uh, to the windowing system, etc. Whatever you need to like bring up a window, uh, render something or process something, uh, play some sound. We give you some some little helpers to do that easily, but we don't go that far that we, you know, a full-fledged uh, game engine like that. So that's where Julian comes yes. in. So so that's we, we uh, let's say that's a domain-specific uh, API like JMonkey, Ardo 3D, etc., or Scilab as well, of course. Um, or you have a specialized solution, like because maybe all these above, they are already too generic. And you know, you have the balance of, of a generic and, and a specialized solution, and the trade off of the generic solution is performance uh, most of the time. So, uh, but, so Julian's great job is, is actually to write back and, and support uh, all these high level APIs um, as well to uh, use Joggle. Uh, so then, in the end, they can benefit from uh, uh, from our uh, platform agnostic solution. That means all of a sudden you can run uh, your GDX uh, game on on Android or uh, mobile device. This is not in all shapes and colors. Um, so th this is about the the Jogian project. So it's a it's a community, and uh, we are independent developers who contribute. And. Uh, we sort of aim, we provide uh, infrastructure, we provide builds that you can use across different platforms. So we are made from yoga. And uh, for example, this show uh, the roots. Uh, so the yoga community was conceived in 2009. Uh, the source code uh, was before then maintained by uh, some microsystems. So this is the contribution from some magical systems. There was a short period where nothing <coughs> happened. And then the yoga community was formed and we have increased in the community activity. Uh, this show we have also use our continuous build system and this keep track of the unit tests that we run. So we started to provide unit tests from 2009 and forward. And our evolution was like, so that's when I jumped in here in 2008, so that's when we started to support mobile devices. So our Joggle 1 solution didn't scale anymore, like we had to re-architecture re um, the, the windowing system, OpenGL um, abstraction to, to support EGL and, and embedded OpenGL um, profiles, they are called, um, and so on and so forth, and we still have no Joggle 2 release, yeah, that's, that's a, a running joke uh, in our community, when is it released? Uh, however, like three years and counting, um, you know, so, so we have uh, uh, lots of activity here. The activity, like the quality of the project, is not just by source code checks, no, the, the most valuable is of course users. Like this is uh, the accumulation of all the unit ma machines, so we have 600 tests uh, running now. Every test. So this is the maturity, the versions I just explained here. So, oh, five learning the And then we have ports and, and bug entries, inspiration, and, and people like it's a learning process with the community. But it's interesting. In, in the beginning, it was like, oh, I'm the you know the the, the bureaucrat. I want I want you to make a bug report. I want you to write a unit test uh, for to reproduce a bug report, etc. 
in the beginning it was like you, you know you're shouting in a room and say oh that that you know I click that button and it doesn't work so I thought I cannot do anything with that report so now like three years after afterwards people actually use Git people use bug reports etc I can merge uh, code um, and we became quite productive so that's really awesome and this is something you cannot do in a proprietary project like nobody tests your stuff for free. We do these bundles, etc. Uh, we show that later and, and make notes uh, when we show the demos, so it's more maybe more interesting. So these, these, for example, this is an activity log of our web page. So we had like the unique uh, visitors. It's interesting. Like in January 2011, like from 7,000 to 10,000 here and, and the gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So you, you see that in 2012. Like we reached uh, 15,000 visitors. Uh, maybe questions. Uh, uh, now it's a good time for questions. <laughs> <laughs> so are you actually writing, uh, you're writing things that implement these low-level APIs on different hardware platforms? So that, for example, a Java application has a standard way of getting it. Right? Yes. So, for example, OpenGear. If you read OpenGear, it says that it's a cross-platform API. Uh, this is just the problem that OpenGL do not have a function how to open a window. So you need to have open a window in the platform specific way before you can start using OpenGL. And so we abstract that complexity away. So you just say, I want our gear, OpenGL profile, I want to write my application for OpenGL 2.2, and I want to create a window, and I want to open it. And uh, so, so the same lines of code will run on all but, the platforms. But the other point is your action. Um, so your the, the project we, is writing that code as the, well. The way we write the bindings, we, yeah. we use a helper tool. Right. So we, we got something we call Gluegen, that's it, part of the project. It's a C header parser, because all these um, OpenGL specifications, you have a C header file. Um, so you can read the header file and generate Great, the JMI binding for us so, and make sure all the checks are in place. And now it's demo time. So, this is now an example uh, deployed via Webstart, JNLP stuff. So, this is uh, a processing data with OpenCL, writing it directly into a GPU texture and showing it here. Right? So, this is like in interoperability of OpenCL, OpenGL. Uh, Surprise! It still works. Never touched that part actually for a long time. And uh, no. so this is uh, so this is, this is one of the OpenCL demos. Do you need some native or some native libraries to do you need some native libraries to run this? Yes. So the the binding the um, so we we so yeah our bindings have a Java part and a native part. So the Java part is all the same for all platforms, unlike, let's say, SWT, right? SWT, you have even specific, et cetera, for okay. We don't have that. Um, it's a generic, and, and we have our Jenkins system. We have at least one platform for each supported, uh, one node for each supported platform, which generates, uh, not, you know, generates the native library and also tests it. So we run the unit test. Then we, uh, the artifacts are moved back to our server, we repackage everything but by script and create uh, like native jar files. The native we have a loader of native jar files, um, so you don't need to play with your library path or anything. Even with applets right now, we you just can uh, you just tag the, the platform independent jar file and we automatically load the platform dependent uh, jar file uh, if it's available. So you just need to put it somewhere in the folder uh, URL where you have your, your platform independent stuff and then it's being picked up automatically and there you go. <coughs> it detects it from the browser which uh, platform is running on. How does it detect the platform? <coughs> yeah, web that's web through stuff. Java itself. Okay. We actually have a problem with that. So Java has an OS and ARC environment uh, variable uh, which is not satisfying us. Um, and maybe in some years there is a solution, so it's in discussion. But it's just discussed, I think. Just oh, yeah. Last week. Yeah, last week. So we cannot wait for that. So what, what we did, for example, for the Raspberry Pi, we have the ARM, like ARM, the only ARM is reported, you know that, and then we, we just look around the system, you know, if we find some magic files, and then we, we just say, okay, it's hot float or soft float. 
And so soon we, like, that's on our to-do list, write an ELF parser. I mean, it's just parsing the header file and not a big deal. So at least we can read the Java virtual machine is hard float, so we'll have hard float. So we have to do that. Because uh, in the end, we have to, uh, we, we don't just support open JDK, J like we want to run on any JVM. So Dalvik is supported as well. And, Jam VM is yeah. supported. Jam VM. Check how is supported. Yeah. 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 We, we can even run it using GCG, GCG? GCJ? Yeah. yeah, the GNU Java yeah. thingy, you know, native, yeah. So, uh, so, so to, before you close this one, yeah. I want to say I have a quality metric. If, in order to people to think that something is fluid, you have to do all the processing, ideally, within 16 milliseconds. 16? 16, because that's 60 frames per second. So if you want to have an application that is rendering a game or something, you will need to do all the logic and all the rendering for each frame within 16 milliseconds. <coughs> So, so all the, the like the last I don't know some keynote somebody said 30 frames per second that's ridiculous look so the, the whole trend goes to 60 at least 60 hertz uh, if you have mono visuals and if you have stereo visuals you need 120 hertz minimum so that otherwise you get dizzy and sick so that, that, that it doesn't work uh, yeah so then you need to be below eight milliseconds if you want stereo and that's interesting for all these these little devices because. You know, you, you need the fill weight, the pixel fill weight, etc. It must get, get higher and higher. And, and right now, you have high density uh, tablets, etc. So the, the GPUs must be more and more powerful. So that's uh, so, it's so, a challenge. So just to do a not calculation, if you want to update every pixel on a high definition TV in 60 frames per second, you need to have a pixel change rate about 26 giga pixels. And this is not something you do on the CPU, so that's why you're using dedicated hardware. So this is, for example, when we deploy, we did. This is the little applet showing what information we 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 have. Like this is a Git hash value. So this is so we have that information. If we have bug reports, we can. So this is our version number. So other people like other types of version numbers, you know. Um, so, this, <laughs> so yeah, we, we have to work on that. But we can identify the points, so that's, that's a good thing. So, and these applets which you have just showed, they are now uh, accelerated by your graphic yes. card? Or? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so the, the, the Mandelbrot saw it was using OpenCL. OpenCL is mainly for compute, for Crunching numbers, and then we have OpenGL as well, so you can perhaps launch. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. So do, do you have a fallback if there is no native library available? Then uh, does it run in, Java only? In, in or? the world we operate on, uh, the user requires this high fluidity, and if you target, for example, OpenGL ES2, uh, you can target a subset that is common. Uh, common functionality found in both mobile devices and desktop computers today. So you can target. So we don't have got a fallback. What we do have is uh, we, we have some helper functionality. So if you want to deploy on a mobile device, if the mobile device does not have all the functionality from the uh, desktop OpenGL driver, we can have some helper functionality to help the transition to OpenGL. Yes. So to, uh, thankfully for OpenGL, it's not an issue. That's good because everybody usually has OpenGL drivers. Because even the desktop windowing system works works with OpenGL drivers, like it needs it requires. Uh, OpenAL is a different thing. So OpenAL, we now uh, and and with Bryce, so we we worked on on, on, on building and uh, a native Open, OpenGL, uh, uh, like creating an open well, world. So creating a native OpenGL build, like library and deploy it with our uh, open AL binding, show AL. So, so that's a work in progress uh, because open AL is only uh, deployed by uh, OSX. Yeah. So here's, here's now now that uh, infamous ES demo. Like we have, so AWT. You usually have AWT. This is nude, uh, nude in an applet, so you can have full screen. All this thing that still works, yeah. And and then you can go back to your browser. So that. That all kind of goes here. And we have other 
Okay, so new is our approach, for example. So you, you know AWT. So what we said before, we want to run everywhere. We cannot rely on AWT anymore. Good. So we wrote our own uh, native uh, new, uh, uh, abstract windowing toolkit. New apps, new, yeah, whatever. And um, <laughs> so instead, so but we only concentrate on the, uh, let's say, on a window surface handler and on key and mouse input, console input, let's say. That's all. So no security code and whatever, you know, like the makes AWT ugly is in there. So it's, it's still small. Um, no, yeah. so, yeah, we, can run this. we can run this, and so we have here a few few basic demos. So this is a video player. This video player uh, plays uh, using libav. We have many backends, like we have an Android backend. We have an uh, oops. No. We have an uh, uh, ffmpeg libav backend. And we have to work on the open uh, Max backend. That's a hardware accelerated stuff, right? So this is a low resolution, um, as you see with the anti-aliasing here, yeah, and so on. Yeah. Okay. So then we had had the yeah, just just um, so this is another tackling another problem we had that the text rendering, right? The, the, the graph and, and UI and and, and Julian uh, uh, will show other solutions to that problem. Um, so this is a GPU solution. So all the curves you see here are rendered uh, using the GPU. Um, Rami Santina wrote that method, so that's not loop link, that's patent free. So really a free solution. Um, we still have to work on this, um, meaning uh, the pre-processing of the busy curves and curves. So uh, that has to be uh, a speed up and cache like for every character. What you just saw here, so this is our machine. It's a, so this, the same demo works here too. So this is using Nude, and so if you stay with that within, let's say the the free API, then there you are. I mean, you, you get the idea, right? Uh, we have high resolution videos available. So much. It's a bit more complicated applications. So for example, this is a uh, dual core uh, Tegra two based. Uh, and this is running actually Yam VM as the VVM, and it's a, uh, it's, it's a running actually the Java Jake 2 port. So this is uh, uh, ported from the desktop Jake 2, now running on uh, the Tegra uh, using Yam VM. Uh, you can also run it on uh, on uh, mobile phones. So here you run it on Amigo phone, also using OpenJDK. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can port even higher level engines. For example, now I'm plugging in a Raspberry Pi, and uh, this is uh, like we said, we support uh, different game engines. So this is uh, based on the LibJDX. Yes, LibJDX. Let's see if this is here. Steam mouse. Ah, yes. There we go. So now I just uh, need to start, uh, start from the AI players. And this time we are using the Cacao VM on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so we're using the hardware acceleration on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it can yeah, render sprites. Uh, this, this is op using OpenGL ES1, actually. And uh, yeah, the direct High frame rates. The Jake 2 you, you saw, so the, 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 uh, it had like we have also an emulation layer ourselves. So we emulate ES1 with ES2. So that can be helpful in porting old stuff over. However, it's recommended to use here the shader language, etc. Yep. So yeah, so I I will just talk another demo. Uh, what we show here is that we are actually accessing the system library for video decoding. So this is a video we made last time we had had a speed. And that's the same video decoder you saw on the Apple. So, um, but here we are using the software 
uh, FFmpeg libav library. That's why, and this is a high resolution video, so that's why it's a little bit slow. So, so the Raspberry Pi might need to uh, uh, integrate with the Mac so it's more yeah. upload, more functionality, then it can get the video decoding fast as fast as they have the uh, rendering. Mm. So the rendering is done uh, in soft on thread. So that's the video. And of course, you can have uh, you have the screen, you have gears running on the console of the Raspberry Pi. So, Forty minutes are not much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming.